But how do you look at asset allocation for investments now, post-exit, with what could be stability for you? I had to, A, take a hard look at how I got here, and then B, take a hard look at like how I was going to get out of it and how I was going to rebalance and restabilize. So I basically came up with a three-step action plan. Number one, understand my relationship to money and understand why it was so broken. So, so go do the deep work of like, how did I develop this high risk, high reward mindset? You know, where did that come from? And even ask hard questions like, what was my parents' relationship with money like? Like, why do I lack value when it comes to money? So, so really understanding that because I truly believe I would have been stuck in the same patterns if I didn't take the time to understand where those patterns came from. Right. So I needed to understand and heal my relationship with money. Number two, I needed to create a balanced portfolio plan, an actual wealth plan that served my values. I was able to do that in building this, this massive portfolio with my oil and gas company, but I hadn't done it in my personal life. So I already had the knowledge of how to build a portfolio. I just needed to do it in my personal life. So I had to rebalance my plan. And then number three is I needed to create a pure accountability board. And I think if I look back at a lot of the biggest outsized risks that I took, if I'd have had a few trusted advisors that were looking over my shoulder, I gave them a full picture of my net worth and I go, hey, like, what do you think about this deal? They'd go, why don't you invest 25K instead of 250K into this deal? Why don't you take a more appropriately sized risk to your net worth? I think having that accountability would have really saved me. And, and one of the things that happens in personal finance is because it's all in closed doors, like we can make really bad decisions and no one knows about it. I don't have to justify my decisions to anybody. So that allows me to all of a sudden go from 25 to 50 to 150 to 250 to maybe half a million and keep kind of this downward spiral. Um, and, and by the way, like, again, it's not that the deals were bad that I was investing in. It's just they were completely illiquid. The thing that I really needed to do was understand my buckets. Like I've got a liquidity bucket, a semi-liquid bucket, and then an illiquid bucket. I was 100% in illiquid assets. So how do I rebalance that? Liquidity is to me, anything stocks, ETFs, crypto, like anything that you can get out in 24 hours in case of emergency, that's liquid. Semi-liquid is like real estate, right? I can sell my house. I can't sell it tomorrow, but I can sell it in the next 30 to 90 days probably. So that's semi-liquid. And then a startup, which is I give you 50K. I'm not going to see that again, minimum five to seven years. By the way, probably never because uh, even the best VC funds out there have like a one in 63 uh, return rate. How do I rebalance that it is a huge question. And for me now, I am only putting things into liquid and semi-liquid places until I'm completely rebalanced.